Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm your host, Pat Sun, and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash stories, where OP left his cheating wife to deal with the consequences of her actions, and she's bitter about it. Let's begin. I'm divorcing my wife after finding out that my son is not mine. Posted by Reddit user OK.3924. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I found out that my wife cheated on me six years ago. The way I found out is that her sister told me after going to visit her to find out how the delivery of her first child was. She confessed to me that six years ago, my wife told her that she slept drunk with her best friend. In her words, my wife was very sorry. At the time, she told me I was with my son, and immediately after leaving her house, I went to take a paternity test with him, fearing the worst. A week later I get the results and my fears came true, my son is not mine. For some reason, I began to see the boy differently, more as an acquaintance than a son. With proof in hand I confronted my wife that night when the child was sleeping. She asked me who told me, and I simply told her that it is none of her business, although it would obviously not take long to connect the dots that it was her sister. Well, that is not my problem now. Regardless of that, I asked her for a divorce, which is now in process. She was devastated. She swore to me more than once that nothing happened with anyone again, that she has been faithful to me in body and soul since then. I held back the urge to insult her to avoid complications during the divorce issue, not believing a word she said, mostly blaming the alcohol instead of taking the blame herself. After talking about it, she threatened me, saying that she would demand full custody of the child. I was so annoyed at that moment that I told her okay, I don't want anything to do with something that is not mine, that she keep the child and I'll keep the dogs. We have two dogs that we adopted as puppies and they are currently eight years old each. After my words, she tried to convince me to take care of the child with her, that I am his father. At that moment I exploded. I was so angry and I had held back so much the urge to scream that I just yelled at her to go and take her bastard with her. A week has passed since then and I am at home. It is in my name because it is a gift from my parents. She went to her parents' house with her kid. She has not called me since then. She left with everything and the half-asleep kid when I yelled at her, especially since it was the first time I really yelled at her. It sure affected her. I talked to my parents and my dad told me that I did the right thing and that I shouldn't be raising something that is not of my blood. And I agree with him. However, the pain is still there. My younger brother told me to write here to entertain myself. I am currently seeing a therapist three times a week who told me that I have already taken the first step, which was to leave behind what causes me pain. It just hurts to know that my family no longer exists. Regarding why my sister-in-law told me everything, according to her, she felt guilty seeing me always happy with my son, knowing that he may not be mine, and that the fact that we went to visit her in a moment of weakness caused her to completely break down with guilt. I don't know how true that is, I just know that right now I feel tremendous hatred for my wife and a feeling between pain and resentment for the child, although it's just time to get ahead. I just hope the divorce goes smoothly, we have separate finances and properties. If she really asks for child support I have proof that it's not mine, according to my lawyer that's more than enough if she tries a legal process for that. My therapist also recommended that I not see him nor her, that regardless of the child's feelings, I should focus on my own first, that the child is no longer my problem and the sooner I accept it, the better. Sorry for the misspellings, English is not my first language. Now for OP's first update. Well, two weeks have passed since my first publication and three weeks since everything happened. Not many relevant things have really happened, but here is a short summary. Approximately three days after my publication, my ex came to my house and asked to come in. I went out and met her at the door. I told her that she is not going to set foot in my house while I am here. If she is going to say anything, it will be at the door. Well, she practically begged me to take her son back. She said that if I want to cut off all contact with her, that's fine, she deserves it, but she can't raise a child alone. She said that she has a job and that raising him alone is going to destroy her dream of being a notary. She works in public records and is two more years away from running for the judiciary to get a vacancy to have her own notary. I tried to explain to her in the calmest way I could that my therapist is the one who recommended that I cut off all contact with the two of them and to please leave my door before I lose my mind. I love the child, but I don't want to take out my anger on an innocent, even less considering that this innocent kid is the product of her inability to keep her legs closed. I said that the child deserves better and that she is currently responsible for giving it to him. I don't know how, but that's not my problem anymore. After that we talked a little more, she resisted the urge to try to cry and make a scene. 
We were on the street, and she is someone who always took into account what people said about her. The last thing she asked me was to at least let her see the dogs. I told her no, that the best thing is for them to get used to her absence. Seeing her again after so much time will only make them upset and confused. After that she just nodded and left. Two days after that, she called me when she received the divorce papers. My mistake was answering the phone, because after about 30 minutes she was yelling, to which I later managed to say that the papers must have the number of my civil lawyer, so she can call her if she has any questions. After that, I blocked her number. She has not come to my house since then nor tried to reach out again. That same day I contacted a friend that I made during my master's degree and I asked her to go out. She accepted and well, we've been going out since then. Finally, last Friday, I asked her to be an exclusive couple and she accepted. She has stayed over at my house for a few days. She already knows my dogs and adores them, which I appreciate because I couldn't start something with someone who doesn't accept my pets. We are currently taking things slow. She knows the drama I am having with my ex and the child, and she respects my decision. She asked me if I would ever have contact with the child again, I told her maybe when he is of an age to understand my decisions, but I said that I don't expect it to interfere with my life in the future. She just nodded and said she was glad that I am prioritizing myself during this process. Maybe this took a little longer than I expected, but this is the summary of what happened these days and well, many people have been asking me for an update so here it is. And now, for OP's final update. Well I'm officially a divorced man. In my country, there is a type of divorce called quick divorce, in which if there are no common assets, joint finances and children involved, the divorce can be carried out municipally and not judicially, avoiding the entire process involved, which would have included conciliation, distribution of assets, etc etc. Based on what has been mentioned, you can guess that the only problem was the issue of the son that we both have. Well, this leads to the issue of the paternity test, which made it possible to verify that said child is not mine and that my name was successfully taken off of his birth certificate along with my last name. Regarding how the divorce went, it was not easy. My ex-wife tried more than once to use the child's mental state to make me return to her. Although I thought about it more than once, it was just remembering everything that had happened that allowed me to stay focused. I must also thank my current partner, who supported me at all times and always supported my decisions. I already know that none of this is my fault, but having her tell me this also somehow helped me. Finally, after many discussions with our lawyers, I told her that I can pay her half of what a nanny's salary costs for her son while she fixes her life, but that the other half, she will have to pay entirely herself. Thank God, she agreed. I told her not to expect me to take care of her son for her, to which she also agreed. She has always been a person very dedicated to her work, so I suppose that having to be a single mother has shocked her a lot. In any case, out of curiosity, I asked her if she spoke with the child's father. She said that she tried, that he even lived with them for two weeks in her parents' house. But she said he and his son simply have nothing in common and there is no way they can get along. She said she had to intervene so that he and the child don't end up screaming at each other. So after a few weeks, the guy just left. Anyway, although it is somewhat sad, she is a woman with a good job and with a good figure. She will have the help of a nanny, which will give her more than enough time for her to find a suitable stepfather for her son. I don't plan to talk to him yet, maybe I will do so in a couple of years or when he's a teenager. But if the child doesn't want to talk to me, I'm simply not going to insist. I understand if he hates me, so I won't try to have a relationship with him if he doesn't want to. After everything we talked about, she told me that she hated me, and is even more angry that I got a partner so quickly. I thought this was very rude because my current partner was there with us, I had to intervene before an argument between the two of them occurred. Even though she ended up signing the divorce papers and said that she appreciated my help, she couldn't stand that throughout the conversation, I looked down at her, as if I felt no compassion for her. She has always been a fairly proud person because everything she has achieved has been on her own merit. So me looking down on her made her feel hurt and angry. I told her that I know what she's talking about, I just have the same look as always. I seriously think she has some type of paranoia problem, but hey, that's not my problem either. The important thing is that she ended up signing the papers and that I can finally have my life again. Although for a year, I will be paying half the minimum wage for a nanny. It is a fair price for peace, I suppose. I had bad feelings for her too, but during this month I ended up just accepting it and moving forward. Yes, I hate her too, but not enough to say it directly or to wish her bad karma. I suppose she has enough problems to deal with. 
I thank my current partner for having to put up with all this shit. More than once, I told her that she didn't have to accompany me to meetings or worry about it, that they are my problems. But she said that my problems are her problems too, and that I shouldn't carry all that alone. The truth is that it has helped me a lot to take some of the load off my shoulders. She also understands that I am in no hurry to get married, not this year and possibly not the next and she understands it. Well, at least this chapter of my life is about to close without long-term consequences for me. Well, so she knew all along. Her sister knew what she was doing. Most probably her parents knew too. Her friends and extended family all knew that you were raising another man's baby. Look man, I'm glad that you got out of that situation. But do you know what I find odd though? So many in the comment section are trying to guilt trip this man into taking on the lifetime burden of caring for a kid that is not his while being reminded daily of his wife's infidelity. This type of fraud is uniquely one-sided. This should be a felony. Also, you are much kinder than I would have been, OP. I would have never, ever offered to help her in any way. I would rather burn the money rather than give her a damn thing. She's pure trash and a cheap liar. But regardless, you still did well. I hope you the best, OP. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat Sun to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.